Okay, so Thursday is exam two. Yeah. Um, and the topics are everything up through entropy. Um, so all the stuff that, like, up through that long uh, outline that I did the last couple of classes. And so the new stuff I'm going to talk about today is not related to the test at all. Um, so before I get started on new stuff, anybody have any questions about the test or on old homework questions or anything like that? Okay. Well, um, so now we're going to get into some more practical applications of the stuff we've been doing. Uh, we're going to talk about the Rankine power cycle. Um, and this basic idea is used in all sorts of power plants. Um, it's used in coal, oil, solar, uh, nuclear, uh, biomass. power plants. Uh, we're going to talk about sort of an idealized version of it, and then I'll talk about modifications to that to make it more realistic. Um, the working fluid, so um, there's a fluid that goes through a cycle in order to create power, and it's almost always water. Although you can set it up to have two going in parallel, uh, where you have something uh, with with um, with a much higher melting point or boiling point, I guess is what matters. Um, and then you use the heat runoff from the hotter cycle to heat the cooler cycle, and so you get sort of two from one that way. Um, <clears throat> But the basic idea is this. Um, so you have a boiler that goes to a turbine, and the turbine is where the work is done. Um, the boiler uh, we have heat going into our working fluid. From the turbine, it goes to a condenser. And this is where heat goes out. This is the exhaust. And from the condenser, uh, well, you have much higher pressure in the boiler than you do in the condenser, so you need something to force the fluid in that direction. And so we have a pump. And I'm going to name the states in between these things, um, and I'm going to keep using uh, these numbers throughout this whole discussion. So. Um, State one is going into the turbine, and state two is out of the turbine. Uh, then state three is out of the condenser. And state four is out of the pump going back to the boiler. Um, in the ideal Rankin cycle, that's what we're going to talk about first. Here are the assumptions we're going to make. 
um, from states one to two, uh, the working fluid is expanding isentropically. So isentropic expansion through the turbine. Um, this is where the power is generated. Um, and I'm going to call that power uh, work uh, T, sub T for turbine. And notice that since this is an isentropic expansion, um, if you uh, calculate the entropy at state one, that has to be equal to the entropy at state two. Okay. Then the second device uh, from state two to state three uh, is a constant pressure um, heat uh, rejection or, yeah, let's call it rejection. Through the condenser. And so we know from this one that uh, pressure at state two is equal to pressure at state three. Then from three to four, uh, we have the pump. Uh, that is also isentropic. Uh, so an isentropic process to pump a, the liquid now. Uh, to a higher pressure. Um, isentropic means that S3 has to be equal to S4. And then the last step is state four to state one. Um, Heat is brought in to the working fluid. Oh, um, go up here for a second to uh, state two to state three. Let's name this heat rejection. Let's call that Q sub C. Uh, that's the heat at the cold reservoir. Um, and then from four to one, heat goes into the working fluid, the water. Uh, we're going to call that heat QH. That's coming from the hot reservoir. Uh, and this is also constant pressure. So we know that the pressure at state four has to be equal to the pressure at state one. And these four equations here are going to be really important for getting around as we do these calculations. So we have the two isentropic processes and the two constant pressure processes. Um, and we're going to look at this uh, mainly um, with a temperature entropy diagram. So here's what this looks like. Um, so temperature is on the vertical axis and specific entropy is on the horizontal axis. And there's the vapor dome. 
So remember, uh, the meaning of this vapor dome is anything over in, to the left of the vapor dome is a compressed liquid. Anything inside the dome is at saturation, and it's a mix of liquid and vapor. And anything to the right is a vapor. Uh, and anything above that dome uh, is a uh, supercritical fluid that's above the critical temperature and pressure. Um, and here is what this ideal, so Um, so this is uh, what I'm going to show you is a graph of the TS diagram for the ideal Rankine cycle. And here's what it looks like. Um, so at state one, uh, you have a saturated vapor. State two, remember from state one to state two, is the turbine, and it's isentropic, which means that uh, this line has to be vertical because entropy has to stay constant. And so this vertical line is the turbine. Um, and then we get to state two here. So after the turbine, this is a mix of uh, saturated vapor and saturated liquid. Um, and then uh, in the condenser, we go from this mix of a saturated vapor and saturated liquid to a full saturated liquid. So that's state three. Um, then we have the pump and there's a small increase in temperature associated with the pump, and we go from a saturated liquid to a, uh, a compressed liquid. That's our state four. And then the last step, it has two legs of this trip. Um, the first one takes it back to saturation. And then the second leg of that trip uh, goes from a saturated liquid to a saturated vapor. So it just changes the phase. So let me write down all those phases. So this is the phase of the working fluid. Um, at each of those four states. At state one, so uh, read these values off the uh, temperature entropy diagram to me. What's the, what's the phase at state one? Uh, that's going into the turbine. So the states are between the devices and, and uh, just based on where it is on the vapor dome at that state one, what's the phase of that water? So that would be a saturated vapor. That's right. And from there, it goes through the turbine. And when it comes out of the turbine, we're at state two. So what's the phase at state two? Next saturation of a certain quality. That's right. So mixed, saturated, liquid, 
and vapor. Um, then it goes to the condenser. And it comes out of the condenser at state three. So what's the phase of the water at state three? <laughs> yep. Hi. And um, then it goes into the pump. And when it comes out of the pump, it's at state four. And what's the phase of the water? In the two poles, right? They have state four? Yep. So be, uh, now I'm saying for you. That's right. Um, so compressed liquid. Um, Later, we're going to consider, so um, for now, this is going to be, these are the phases that we're going to deal with. Um, later, we'll consider two improvements, um, two ways that you can get the, the efficiency to go up. Um, and those are superheat and reheat. Um, so the superheat looks like this. Again, we're going to look at the temperature entropy graph. Um, so at the boiler, you don't stop heating it when the, uh, when the vapor is at saturation. You go to this state one, uh, where it's a, um, where it's a superheated vapor. So this is a constant entropy then? So it's not an isotropic Okay, remember that this uh, line that I've drawn here is not the um, oh, yeah, is not the turbine, and that's still part of the boiler. Oh, okay. The turbine still is isentropic, and um, but it drops all the way down to here. Uh, actually, it drops past there. Yes, the idea of the turbine being isentropic is pretty much the idea that it, there's no waste heat generated at the turbine. It just all goes in the work. Sorry, say that again. I, I was I'm saying with the turbine being mm -hmm. isentropic, the main idea is just everything's going into work at that point. There's no waste heat generated. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's true. There's no, because um, the requirements for isentropic are there's no heat transfer and there's no frictional loss or anything. It has to be internal, internally uh, reversible. Okay. So, um, so yeah, basically it's just there's no heat loss and it's very efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can't have isentropic for the, con uh, the condenser and the boiler because the whole point is the heat transfer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is state two. Uh, this is state three. This is state four. But now you have three steps to this process that goes um, try to get all these lines right. So now um, uh, you come out of the pump, you go to the boiler, uh, you heat up the compressed liquid until it's a saturated liquid, then you 
the temperature doesn't change as the phase change happens. And then once it's a saturated vapor, then the temperature starts going up again. All right, one last question. Yeah. So for F1 right now, when you superheat the vapor, so you can go past the critical point? That doesn't matter, actually. That's just how I drew it there. On my picture on here, it doesn't. But there's also benefit to heating this up past the critical point. But that's not what this is necessarily. The idea of this is just that it goes past the saturation point. One of the reasons you want to do that, by the way, practically speaking, is it does a lot of damage to the turbine if you have a water, a liquid mixture in there. It's very hard on the turbine blades. And so the less you can have liquid droplets, the better it is for the system. But then also we'll see that the efficiency goes up as the boiler temperature goes up, which doesn't surprise us because when we were talking simply about power, efficiency of a power cycle, we saw that the efficiency is highest when the boiler temperature is high and the condenser temperature is low. And if you increase the temperature of the boiler or decrease the temperature of the condenser, you get more efficiency. And then reheat. Looks like this. So you still have that superheated that superheated vapor as you come out of the boiler and you run it through a turbine. But coming out of that first turbine, you send it back to the boiler again. So you can think of this as like this is what would have been our one. This is two, state two. This is state three coming out of the condenser. State four. And then, so as you come out of the pump, you heat up the compressed liquid to become a saturated liquid. Then you go through the phase change. Then you increase the temperature to get to a superheated vapor. Then you run it through the first turbine, get some work out. As it comes out of the first turbine, it goes back to the boiler and increases the temperature again. And then it goes through the second stage turbine. And that's when you end up at stage two, at state two. So let me write what's going on here. So this is turbine one. This is back to the boiler. And then this is turbine two. Um, but for now, um, just assume uh, that the water is a saturated vapor coming out of the boiler.
So as it leaves the boiler at state one. Um, one thing that, so since now I'm talking about like ways to increase the performance, um, one thing to keep in mind, I'm not going to do this here. Okay, forget that. We'll come back to it. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do um, is uh, come up with a measure of performance for this cycle. And really there are two measures of performance we're going to use. Uh, the first one is the, called the thermal efficiency. And just like when we talked about power cycles the first time, we're going to use the letter theta to represent that. Um, and for the Rankin cycle, we're going to define that as the rate of work produced by the turbine, so uh, W dot T, minus the rate of work uh, that's used by the pump. Remember the pump, you need electrical energy in to, to do the pumping. And then divided by the rate of heat in at the boiler. So that's our definition of uh, performance. Um, right now, we don't have a good way to calculate that, but that's what we're going to do now is go through each one of these uh, devices and calculate, you know, use those to come up with uh, um, an expression for eta uh, that's easy to find. Okay, so uh, first, from state one to state two, we have the isentropic expansion through the turbine. Um, we're going to assume this is steady state. Uh, we're going to assume there's no change in potential energy, no change in kinetic energy. It's isentropic, so we know that there's no heat transfer. And so we're going to start with the control volume uh, energy balance equation. So d dt is equal to q dot minus W dot plus M dot times the quantity HI plus VI squared over 2 plus GZI minus M dot times HE plus VE squared over 2 plus GZE and we'll cancel out the stuff that goes away based on our assumptions. Um, and all we're left with <clears throat> is W dot and the uh, enthalpies. And if you rearrange this, um, you get W dot divided by M dot is equal to HI minus HE. Okay, um, 
for the turbine is um, is work produced by the turbine or is work done on the turbine to accomplish something else? The idea of the turbine is that work comes out of the device, okay? Yeah, yeah. Which is which is the same sign the you know same sign convention we used in the first law here, yeah. right? And so um, we know that we're going to have uh, w dot sub t produced out. And we know that um, this is going from state one to state two. So we can rewrite this as uh, w dot sub t over m dot is equal to h1 minus h2. Um, next, going from state two to state three, uh, we have an amount of heat QC, or at a rate QC dot, uh, that's rejected. Answer. Again, we're going to assume steady state. Uh, we're going to assume change in potential energy, change in kinetic energy. And W dot are all equal to zero. This is just a rigid device. Start again with the first law for control volumes. DDT is equal to Q dot minus W dot plus M dot times the quantity HI plus VI squared over 2 plus GZI minus M dot times the quantity HE plus VE squared over 2, plus GZE. Make all the cancellations. And this time what you're left with is Q dot and enthalpies and the mass flow rate. Um, and you get negative Q dot over m dot is equal to h i minus h e. Um, well, in this case, heat's being rejected. Uh, so a positive value of q c dot is going to be negative according to the sign convention of the first law, right? Um, so QC dot is positive if it's going out. So I'll rewrite this as positive QC dot over M dot um, is equal to H2 minus H3. Okay, now uh, state three to state four. This is the isentropic pump um, 
We're going to assume steady state, change in potential energy and change in kinetic energy, and this time Q dot are all equal to zero. So write out the control volume equation, D D T is equal to Q dot minus W dot plus M dot times the quantity HI plus VI squared over 2 plus GZI minus M dot times the quantity HE plus VE squared over 2 plus GZE. Make the cancellations. Um, the EDT is 0, Q dot is 0. Kinetic and potential energy terms go away. And you come up with the same expression we came up with for the turbine. Um, I'm going to write it uh, with the reverse signs, though, just to point out the directions of things. So we have negative W dot over M dot is equal to this time HE minus HI. Um, and we know that WP dot, now this is electric work that's brought into the pump uh, in order to change the pressure of the fluid. So this is positive for work into the system. Uh, and so I can rewrite this equation as WP dot over M dot is equal to, so this time we have H at the exit minus at the inlet. And so, you know, that's H4 minus H3. Uh, there's one more thing that's going to be useful when we talk about the pump. So one more useful relationship for the pump. Um, Let's look back at the uh, TS diagram. Uh, this is the cycle that we're thinking about. Um, so the pump uh, takes in saturated liquid water and outputs compressed liquid water, right? So it's a liquid the whole time. So we can assume that, that, uh, that the fluid through that stage uh, is incompressible. So the water is incompressible. Through the pump. And since it's isentropic, uh, delta S, or any, you know, DS at all, is equal to zero. Okay, so um, let's start with the TD TDS equation and derive another uh, relationship for this different in difference in enthalpies. So let's start with TDS is equal to DH minus V DP
Um, this goes away because it's isentropic. V is constant. because we're assuming that this fluid is incompressible. And so you come up with dH is equal to V dP, which you can integrate, you know, since V is constant, you can pull it out of the integral. And you get that H4 minus H3 is equal to V. I mean, this could be either V, but uh, we probably want to use three because that's the saturated one. We can just look it up. Uh, times the pressure at four minus the pressure at three. Okay, so um, and this H4 minus H3 we already calculated was equal to W dot over M dot. So we can set, you know, this is another way to calculate that work brought in at the pump divided by the mass flow rate. And then the last one goes from uh, state four to state one. Uh, this is heat in to the fluid at the boiler. We're gonna assume steady state uh, we're going to assume no potential energy change or kinetic energy change or work dot. Those are all equal to zero. And so this is the last time you have to write this down today, I think. Uh, the control volume equation D D T is equal to Q dot minus W dot plus m dot times the quantity hi minus, I know, plus vi squared over 2 plus gzi minus m dot times the quantity he plus vi squared over 2 uh, no, this is V E squared over two plus G Z E. Make the cancellations. Uh, no W dot, no potential or kinetic energy. And you get that Q dot over M dot is equal to HE minus HI. Um, at the boiler, we have Q sub B dot positive if it's coming into the working fluid. Um, so we can rewrite this as Q sub B dot over M dot is equal to H1 minus H4. Okay, so now we can use this 
in an expression for the thermal efficiency. The thermal efficiency, remember, is uh, W sub T dot minus W sub P dot divided by QB dot. And we don't change that fraction if we divide everything by the mass flow rate. So let's rewrite this as WT dot over M dot. minus WP dot over M dot all divided by QB dot over M dot and now we can make the substitutions that we just came up with um, so this is equal to uh, H1 minus H2. So that's the WT dot over M dot is equal to H1 minus H2 minus the quantity, our expression for WP dot over M dot was H4 minus H3. Um, and divide that by our expression for Q sub B dot over M dot, uh, which is H1 minus H4. And now you can fiddle with that a little bit. Um, So that's equal to 1 plus uh, the quantity H3 minus H2 over the quantity H1 minus H4. And then, so let's rewrite it one more time. Eta is equal to 1 minus the quantity H2 minus H3. All I did was switch the sign. Divided by H1 minus H4. Okay, so if you can come up with the enthalpies at all four of those states, then you can calculate the efficiency of the cycle. Uh, notice that um, both the numerator and the denominator here are positive. Um, Also, H2 minus H3, so notice that H2 minus H3 was equal to uh, QC dot over M dot. And H1 minus H4 was equal to QB dot over M dot. So you can rewrite this thermal efficiency also in terms of the heat. Um, as 1 minus QC dot over M dot 
divided by QH dot over M dot. Cancel out the M's and that's equal to one minus QC dot over QH dot. I feel like we've seen that before. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what do we have so far? Um, so we have expressions in terms of enthalpies of the works, the rate of work, um, and the rates of heat transfer. And then we have an expression for the, um, for the performance of this cycle in terms of the enthalpies uh, or the heat. And then there's one other uh, parameter or coefficient that's useful for the um, calculating the performance of this cycle. That's called the back work rate. And it's just the ratio of the work that's required to run the pump divided by the work that you get out of the turbine. Uh, you want that to be low. Um, you don't want to spend all the energy you gain just running the pump. Um, so this is better the lower it is. And in practice, it's really, really low, uh, under 1%. The back work rate is W at the pump dot divided by uh, W for the turbine dot. That's the same thing as WP dot over M dot divided by uh, WT dot over M dot. And that's equal to H4 minus H3 divided by H1 minus H2. All right, so I mentioned that um, you get better performance as the temperature or pressure go up in the boiler. or uh, temperature or pressure go down in the condenser, down. Um, showing that that's true for the pressure is a little more complicated, but um, we can make sense out of the fact that uh, the performance goes up as the temperature goes up or down. Um, so we can show this relationship with temperatures. You just have to trust me on the pressures. Um, So, uh, 
we know that um, so assume that we have this internally reversible uh, process, which is just basically saying that the processes we're going to talk about are in the ideal cycle that we're analyzing. You know, we're like everything we're talking about is already internally reversible. So our cycle has been internally reversible this whole time. Or already. Um, well, the definition of uh, the differential change in entropy, ds, is dq over the temperature. And you can think of that as m times d little s is equal to dq over the temperature. Um, And rearrange, and you get that dq over mds. Um, so dq over m is equal to tds. And then uh, this is the same thing as dq dot over m dot is equal to tds. And now you can integrate both sides. And you get that q dot over m dot is equal to the average temperature over that interval times the change in specific entropy. Okay, so we can uh, write that as, uh, well, let's, let's leave it like that for now. And now we want to use this to analyze what's going on at the boiler and at the condenser. Okay, we want to see the relationships between uh, the average temperatures and the heat transfer. Okay, so uh, we're going to use this to analyze the boiler and the condenser. Um, okay, so first at the boiler, we have that Q dot H for the heat coming in at the boiler over M dot is equal to, uh, so what what states are going through the boiler? Uh, what's, what's the state coming into the boiler and what's the state coming out of the boiler? Going into the boiler, it's uh, non-saturated or compressed water. Or yeah, just the, just the number, so just, uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, it's four going in, one coming out. Okay, so this is equal to S1 minus S4. And now let's think about the condenser. Um, so in this case, in the condenser, heat's coming out, right? So we need to use that negative sign. So we have negative Q sub C dot over M dot is equal to, oh, I, man, I messed this up, sorry. 
So we're just using this equation here, right? So this Q dot at the boiler over M dot is equal to the average temperature at the boiler times the quantity S1 minus S4. And now do the same thing at the condenser. We have negative QC dot over M dot is equal to the average temperature at the condenser times the quantity. Well, what are the numbers of the states going in and out of the condenser? Three in, four out. No, two in, three out, the condenser. So this is S3 minus S2. But notice if you go back to the first, let's see, where did I put that up at the top? So remember, though, that because of the isentropic processes, S1 is equal to S2 and S3 is equal to S4. So this is equal to TC average times the quantity S4 minus S3, S4 minus S1, sorry. And so you can rewrite this as QC dot over M dot is equal to TC bar, the average condenser temperature times the quantity S1 minus S4. And now plug these in to one of our two expressions for the thermal efficiency. Eta is equal to one minus QC dot over M dot divided by QH dot over M dot. And that gives you one minus TC average over TH average, because the S1 minus S4s cancel out. You see that? I'll write that out. S1 minus S4 here. Okay, so what does that say? So if you want to get a higher efficiency, you have to increase the temperature at the, like we want this, the thing we're subtracting to be as small as possible. So you have to increase the temperature at the boiler or decrease the temperature at the condenser. So if you ignore all this, Remember, the thermal efficiency increases as the temperature at the boiler increases. I guess let me number these. 
uh, the temperature at the condenser decreases. Those were the two that we just showed. Um, and then the two with pressures, uh, the pressure at the boiler increases. or the pressure at the condenser decreases. So the next thing I'm going to do is just an example problem. It's pretty long. It has a lot of parts. Let me just wait until Tuesday for that. Um, this is, uh, you know, it's like a lot of new information, but uh, you can kind of, uh, um, Simplify it down to a pretty small number of messages. Um, you have a way to calculate the efficiency of the Rankine cycle uh, just in terms of the enthalpies. Um, you can, in finding the enthalpies at those four different states, uh, you're going to need to use the fact that the entropies are the same at the beginning and ends of two of those two uh, devices. Um, those are the pump and the turbine. And also the fact that the pressures are the same at the beginning and end of the two heat transfer parts, uh, the boiler and the condenser. Okay, and so with those things, you you know, the problems are going to tend to just be working your way around. Uh, you're given all this stuff. Okay, well, I don't know this, but I do know the entropies are the same here, and that can let me calculate this because it's incompressible, or let me use a table to calculate, to look this up, that kind of thing. Okay. So, anybody have any questions? Okay, that's it for today. So, test on Thursday. Um, and... Yeah, if you haven't voted, please, please vote. That means so very much to me.